Raiders. All right. Mike Craven is here to talk about the UTSA Roadrunners and the year that they had in 2021. What I think is interesting about UTSA is I feel like coming into 2021, they had kind of become a bit of that hipster team that like a lot of the college football, you know, literati had kind of looked around and they were like, ah, like this. Oh, forget Alabama. Like they're boring. Everyone writes about them. Oh, forget, you know, uh, Michigan. Let's talk about you, a team you didn't even know of. You don't even know about UTSA. And then if they didn't haul off and like make all those hipsters look smart. Yeah, I nobody's ever asked me more about UTSA than this year. Yeah, right? like my my degree got a lot cooler uh, this year. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I I think the most impressive thing about UTSA season is that not only did they meet expectations were, that were higher than they've ever been in program history, they exceeded them, and that's a hard thing to do, mm -hmm. right? Like beating expectations is a very hard thing to do when you're a program that's never done it before. We have to remember this is only their eleventh football season. Right. Yeah. They're on their third coach and this coach is on his second year and his first one was in the middle of a pandemic. They didn't even get a spring. Mm -hmm. Right. So to come out and play the type of football that they played was super impressive. I, I don't think I can say enough about Jeff Trailer, who was our Dave Campbell's coach of the year well, after the season. And I think that you take a look at like, oh, like take Houston, for example, Houston. Like, even if you had high expectations for them, I think they had middling expectations last year and they exceeded them. Uh, but to exceed those expectations, you go, oh, well, here's the history of them exceeding their expectations when they won the Peach Bowl, when they did this and that, you know, when they've won the conference back, you know, back in the day. That's you have that history of them exceeding expectations for UTSA. It's still it's important to remember this is all still new. This is all still making history there. Yeah, absolutely. Like Baylor's the perfect example. Yeah. Like when we named Jeff Trailer the head coach of the year, I had some people be like, Well, what about Dave Aranda? It's like, well, I saw a coach two years ago basically do what Dave Aranda did, yeah. right? When Matt Rule got him to the Big Twelve Championship. I've seen Art Bryles do that at Baylor and have mm -hmm. Baylor good. I've never seen UTSA compete for a conference championship before, much less mm -hmm. win one. Mm -hmm. um, and so to go from, you know, the team that was just happy to be there and trying to belong and going from the WAC up to uh, Conference USA so click quickly and how will that go to a team that was favored in pretty much every mm -hmm. single game the last six weeks of the season was was really impressive. And, I mean, again, just hats off to that, to that team because a lot of those guys weren't recruited by trailer. Right. And so to go into a locker room and get guys that maybe you didn't bring into the school to rally around you and believe in your message and to go win games. And they won so many close games. Yes. And to me, you win close games by coaching and, and like continuity and belief. Yeah. And they had all of those things. And to be in year two, again, with the first one being in the middle of the pandemic, I think it was uh, super impressive to not wilt in the, in the face of all those. He also really got – the city of San Antonio to buy mm -hmm. in on them. And that's not necessarily an easy job. Like we mentioned the Spurs earlier. Obviously I'm a Spurs fan and it's like, that's always been the thing down there and they don't really have room in their hearts. It seems like for a lot of other sports, cause they really just don't care. So when the conference championship rolled around and the entire lower bowl of the dome was full, it was like, Man, that's really impressive. He inherited a roster with 11 players from San Antonio on it. There's 33 on it now. Yep. Yeah. So and he's done what he said he was going to do. To your point, they went six and zero in one score games. Yep. So they played a lot of them, but to to win on the margins, especially as a young program, is is, is awfully impressive. Yep. Let's talk about the offense. Um, let's hand out a grade for them. This is an offense that uh, the average uh, nearly thirty seven points a game. Um, they looked every bit the the balance. I thought was really the the striking thing for them. I, I don't know how you don't give them close to a perfect grade. I mean, it was spectacular. Yeah, I tried to avoid the A-plus because I felt like it would be a little yeah. homerish. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, there wasn't anything that they didn't do well. You know, they only allowed 13 sacks. They only had 13 turnovers all year. Mm -hmm. You know, they averaged over 150 yards rushing, over 200 yards passing. Frank Harris took a step forward the that for Frank I'm not sure that we thought he could even have, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was excellent this year. Sincere McCormick was ab everything that we expected him to be. Uh, Zachary Franklin from Cedar Hill yeah. had a had an incredible year, and he's rewriting all of the uh, all of the record books there at UTSA. And then the offensive line was really good, which is a thing that Jeff Trailer doesn't get enough credit for. Mm -hmm. Like the man knows how to coach offensive line all the way back to his Gilmer days. Like that offensive line wasn't that great when he took over in 2020, and he's turned it in to a strength of the team. So when you take in the lack of turnovers, the lack of sacks, the amount of big plays, the balance that you talked about. 
there's not much that UTSA could have done differently this year to get a higher grade. So, last time we were here, we were talking UTEP, and you you said that there was an argument that they had the best receiving duo in the state at the mm-hmm. FBS level and, and Cowing and, and Garrett. And I'm not necessarily inclined to disagree with it, but at the same time, Franklin, Cephas, and then maybe you even add like to Corey and Clark, Clark into there. Yeah, right. I, I mean, you know, I, I think that I think you're right. And I, and I think the reason that even I don't think of UTSA in those terms is because we consider it sincere McCormick's offense. Right. That's what's so strange He's about so it. so good that you kind of forget how good those other parts are. And you can kind of like, dismiss how good the passing game was or how good the receivers were or even how good the defense is Mm -hmm. because they had that kind of guy at running back you knew they were going to rely on and uh, another thing about sincere i think is impressive is maybe his maybe in 2020 he took some teams by surprise but everybody in 2021 knew what utsa was trying to do and he still almost got to 1500 yards yeah it it, it was awfully impressive the the offense was i don't think anything other than an unmitigated success uh on the defensive side uh the defensive side this is a utsa defense that finished fifth in conference usa in total defense uh they finished let's see as far as scoring defense is concerned they were third giving up 24.6 points per game um they were there were times where they got touched up and there were times where they had some brain farts they were going up against teams that they should probably just you know sit on and they didn't like the same yeah but at the same time overall i think you take a look at what they were doing and it's hard to hard to argue about much what what they were doing they had some issues on the back end Mm -hmm. you know they had some problems a little bit at safety and then Tariq wooten who's going to be an nfl player was injured for most of the Mm -hmm. year um but again they forced 26 turnovers yeah you know, and you're gonna do. You can be a bend but don't break defense, and allow some big plays every now and then. If you're getting your the ball back 26 times, you add that to the only 13 turnovers on the offensive side. They're plus 13 on the turnover margin. That's how you win close games. Mm-hmm. Um, you you know sacks. I think they had 26 sacks or 33 33 sacks. Um, and so you know they had big plays when necessary. Clarence Hicks. Uh, became a really good edge rusher. He was right there. I, I think he almost got – I think he was second in Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year voting. So really good. Rashad Wisdom in the back end, kind of the vacuum. You know, he just kind of cleans everything up back then, just like a really solid football player. Um, so, yeah, uh, a really good defensive effort by UTSA. I do think the offense carried them a little bit more than the defense because, like you said, there were a couple games that became pretty high scoring, and they were – you know, like Western Kentucky and stuff like that, they really got touched up in those games. Yeah, North Texas right. exposed them at that last that last game of the year. So, uh, <laughs> they uh, otherwise though, I mean that that defense was really good, and they were they were opportunistic. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Uh, they they were very opportunistic. All right, now probably the toughest question here is uh, is who's your MVP? I feel like there's about four or five different guys you could go with. Right. Um, who who was your pick? I went with Frank Harris because okay. we gave him offensive MVP. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> the fair. whole year, you know. So you know consistency, right? You know, like if I was like sincere <laughs> McCormick, people would have been like, uh, what? Uh, this so, guy, <laughs> snip, snap, snip, snap. <laughs> I, I think we knew what we were going to get from sincere McCormick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We knew what we were going to get from Clarence Hicks and that defense, Rashad Wisdom and those guys. We knew Zakari Franklin and Cephas; those guys could really catch the ball. I'm not sure we knew Frank Harris could be this efficient. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we he, thought he was a placeholder almost, you know, right. like it was it was don't get in the way. Mm-hmm. Right. Be a game manager. Don't throw interceptions. Create some plays with your legs here and there. In 2021, he became the focal point of that offense. He led some big time drives. They're not in the Conference USA championship game without that long drive against UAB where he throws the, the touchdown with one second left. That was all Frank. And so his step forward is what took UTSA from an eight and four team. To mm-hmm. a twelve and two team, and for that reason, I give him the MVP. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think you could go with Zachary Franklin. I think you could obviously go with Cyril McCormick. I think there's, I think there's a, a couple guys in the defense you could go with. Yeah, Clarence Hicks yeah. Is, is was a tough one to pass up because he really did have a, a have an excellent year. Ten plus sacks, all those tackles for loss. He had the big interception against Western Kentucky that sealed the game in the regular season. So to me, Clarence Hicks was number two. I think I'd go Frank Harris, Clarence Hicks, and Cyril McCormick. But maybe that's just. Sincere I mean, McCormick having such big expectations mm-hmm. that it, it doesn't – it's almost like why Jordan didn't get the MVP every season. Yeah. Right? right? Like why doesn't LeBron get the MVP every year? Because we expect him to be yeah. the best. In I the mean, league. you could be a real – to go back to the word hipster, you could be a hipster about – and say like Spencer Burford and like yeah. how important he was to holding that whole offensive line together, which was, you know, really strength the team. Having a handful of guys that you could hand the MVP out to seems like a good Oh, yeah. Thing. No. <laughs> and seems the guys good. we just mentioned, Burford, Sincere McCormick, Rashad Wisdom, Frank Harris, those are San Antonio guys. Yeah. 
Exactly right. That's and that's awesome. that's where they're gonna their their bread is gonna be buttered. Uh all right. Uh let's now look forward to twenty twenty two. Um again, haven't won a game in months. In fact, they're on a losing streak. Yeah, two uh, out of the last three. Two out of the last three they've lost. Oh. Um so when we take a look at twenty twenty two, uh I, I thought I thought I was a little surprised that Sierra McCormick declared, but at the same time I think he thought, you know what, my stock's probably never gonna be higher. Right. Good for him. Um the expectations are going to be increased for UTS. Like they're not going to sneak. They're not going to be the hipster team anymore as the defending conference champions. Yeah. The out of conference schedule is tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they host Houston, they play at UT. So, you know, maybe not the 11 and 0 start that mm -hmm. they had last year. Uh, I think that's going to be tough for UTSA fans, right? You reach the mountaintop and then you have to reset expectations. Sincere McCormick's not going to be there. Brendan Brady also gone at running back. So they're going to have to figure out that position. Uh, but I do think with Frank Harris and those three receivers that you talked about coming back, defense is going to be pretty good. They lost their offensive coordinator mm -hmm. to Illinois. So Will Stein's going to have to step up. Matt Maddox, uh, our co-OCs. So there is some change behind the scenes going on with UTSA. Uh, but I do think with the way Conference USA is and with Western Kentucky taking a step back without Bailey Zappi at quarterback, they should enter the season as the favorite or one of the favorites next to mm -hmm. you know, maybe Marshall or something. Well, and the other thing is – you know the the recruiting for UTSA has has pretty clearly taken a jump uh, under under uh, you know Jeff Trailer. Winning helps. That's yeah. you know people want to go play for a winner, but there are going to be a couple of guys who I think are going to be able to step in and play immediate roles there. I think uh, for example they got the the sign uh, the tight end from College Station Houston Thomas. Mm -hmm. I see no reason why he can't be a guy who who is an instant impact guy on that offense and and they're gonna I mean they're gonna have some youngsters who are gonna be able to step in. I mean, they beat Kentucky for a corner out of the transfer portal yeah. that the Athletic had as one of like the top 30 available guys in the transfer portal. So, like you said, winning is important, right? And you can make that argument of do you want to go be a middle-of-the-road SEC team, middle-of-the-road Big 12 team, or you want to come win championships and compete for conference championships? They got it rolling right now. Uh, you know, Joe Price there behind the scenes doing recruiting. You know, they just have a really good energetic staff who, as Pickle was talking about earlier, has really embraced San Antonio, mm -hmm. and San Antonio has embraced them. And that helps in recruiting because coaches start calling you, mm -hmm. right? Like that's going to be the biggest advantage for Joey McGuire as well at Texas Tech is they trust Jeff Trailer. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a sophomore or a junior or even a senior that's getting overlooked a little bit, they're going to pick up the phone and be like, hey, Jeff, I got a guy for you. Yes. And he can trust their – you know, analysis, and, and they can trust that they're going to be good at that school. So, And you um, can come in on the recruiting channel and just wow him, and he's yeah. going to instantly sign with you. Right, right. exactly right. right. And there's not a lot of competition out there, right? Like mm -mm. San Antonio's in and of itself in, in a lot of ways. There's not a bigger football team in the city. There's not an mm -hmm. NFL no. team. Um, there's not an NFL team in Austin. So, you know, it's, it's Houston. You can wave Dallas. the 210 flag the um, whole time. Yeah. Right. And so they've really kind of embraced that with the 210 toughness, you know, triangle that they've done. And, um, I think you're starting to see a roster kind of more represent the city of San Antonio and to a greater extent the state of Texas. It's it's exciting things down there at UTSA. Uh, he's Mike Craven. Here's our college football insider here at Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Uh, follow him on Twitter at Craven Mike and of course uh, read his stuff on TexasFootball.com and listen to the Republic of Football. You guys got you you did <laughs> <laughs> you were Easy. you were a little worried. You wanted to make sure Dana Holgerson was going to call you. And he I, did. I, I was sweating it. You were sweating uh, it. I was sweating it. was like a fourth <laughs> quarter, you know, I mean, look, seven it's a it's busy time of year. Right. It busy is. time of year. It and is. so that you is. You do it us a favor. Exactly right. right? So it's a, you're at the mercy. But, yeah, it's just sometimes, you know, you're like, oh, man, this is getting kind of close. But, yeah, it was, a, it was a great interview. So please check that out on uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. On the Republic of Football. Thanks, Mike. You don't want to keep talking UTSA for the next 45 minutes? We can. Mm. I'm uh, cutting this off. We're Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.